Hi, I'm Lauren Lucille Vassar, and I host an online show called The Celiac Diva. It's a talk show where I bring people the dish on all things gluten-free, covering all sorts of topics. And Char has brought me on and partnering with them, we're going to be doing a really cool series where I'm going to be representing the gluten-free consumer, somebody who's newly diagnosed, new to the gluten-free community, and you're like, well, where do I start? Because I know that's exactly what I was thinking when I first got started. I'm Ann Roland Lee, the Director of Nutritional Services for Dr. Char USA. Char is a dedicated gluten-free manufacturer um, of specialty products for those individuals who have celiac disease or gluten sensitivity. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease in which people cannot digest or tolerate gluten. Gluten is the protein found in wheat, rye, and barley. So it does cover many, many usual foods. We employ a team of professionals and an entire R&D department to make sure that we're bringing in the latest research and information, the latest technology in making the best tasting gluten-free products available. This care is also shown in our development of educational materials and series such as this. So we can bring you the best information, the best products, and have you enjoy a great gluten-free life. All right, Anne, tell us what we're gonna do here today. Today, we're going to investigate that whole new world of gluten-free. What happens is that when you're first diagnosed and the doctor gives you this great news that we figured out what's going on, which is, it is, it's that celebration of good, I, now I know what's wrong. Then he says, okay, do a gluten-free diet, be on your way. And that's problematic for a lot of people because, you know, the whole, as we talked about before, what is gluten, what is celiac, it can be an overwhelming feeling. You, can, be, you can come home and feel that, gosh, what can I eat? What, what's safe? What's not safe? So what we're going to do today is investigate what's safe at home. Um, and then in future episodes, we're going to talk about how to make the kitchen safe and reclaim your realm as a gluten-free diva. So when you come back, you've got your kitchen right here. Where's the first place to start? Okay. When we think about being home, we think about baking and preparing things, kind of home and hearth. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with that. When we think about the different things that we would have in our cupboard for baking, I have some really good news. The only thing that can't stay in this cupboard is the flour. Anything that would be a wheat flour, a uh, pancake mix, a cornbread mix, any of those kind of prepared mixes or flour bases have got to go. And then we can look at all the things that can stay, all the things that are possibilities that are totally safe. Nothing wrong with your oil, your baking powder, salt, sugar. One word of caution here on your cooking sprays. A lot of people use them now because it's lower calorie. As long as it's just a vegetable spray, perfectly fine. Okay. If it's a baking spray, it may very well have flour in it because it's used to coat the pan. So that would be something you'd need to be cautious about and read the label. The good news is, look at all the stuff we have here from just one cupboard that's perfectly safe on a gluten-free diet. What about this cupboard? What can stay and what can go? In this cupboard, again, we're gonna have that mixed bag of things. Okay. okay. Things that would be obvious, things like crackers, your cookies, wafers. These are all wheat-based, so these have all gotta go. Gotta go. Okay, out they come. What about fruit? Fruit cups are totally fine. A word of caution, though, is in your canned fruits, mm -hmm. you could have something like this treat. Okay, mm. looks like it would be great. Apple cinnamon. However, it's apple cinnamon crisp. Okay. So this is a no-go because you've got a granola and a wheat-based topping that makes this not good. So plain fruit, plain vegetables, things like kidney beans, peanut butter and jelly, tomatoes, coffee, tea. Look what we have left here. What about cereal? What cereal is a common snack, right? It really is. But one of the first names in that cereal is wheat. Yeah. So most of your mainstream commercial cereals are wheat-based or may even have barley malt added as a flavoring. So those would all have to be eliminated. Okay. So any shredded wheats, any of those common kind of cereals. Things that can, that can be replaced in that would be a rice-based cereal, a corn-based cereal, or some of the new ones like amaranth and things like mm -hmm. that. Those would all be okay. So as you can see, as we've gone through this cupboard, there's a lot of things most people have already in their cupboards and in their home that are naturally gluten-free and are totally safe. Awesome. What's even better, as we go to the next cupboard, you'll see there's even more things. Woo! 
cupboard that often can look a little foreboding at first are your spices and mixes and convenience things. Tell us about the rice and sauce, any kind of an instant packaging thing. Any kind of think? instant packaging, you're going to say suspect until proven innocent. So you've got to read the list of ingredients. Most of these kind of things are a no-go. Okay. Anything that has a creamy sauce, anything that has a thickening kind of agent is going to be left to, left to the side. But the good news is plain rice is fine. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason you can't make your own rice blend so you have the convenience of that packaged meal, but you know it's safe and gluten-free. All right, Anne, so what about the recipe mix, salad dressing recipe mix? These are fine. Again, always read your, your list of ingredients. The Italian is fine, but when They're you get to, to some go. of your other creamy flavors. Any kind of a thickening agent. Anything thickened you have to worry about. Awesome. So tell me about what about the sauces, soy sauce and barbecue sauce. What do you think? Soy sauce and barbecue sauce. It's a mixed bag. While we think soy sauce mate would be a simple item and pretty, pretty safe, the second ingredient on most soy sauces is wheat flour. So because soy sauce is now being used as a flavor enhancer in so many other marinades, you have to read that list of ingredients very, very carefully. Cool. And last but certainly not least, tell me about the spices. Can we keep them or do they have to go? All of your spices are gluten-free. Okay. Seasonings you have to watch out for. By FDA regulation, a spice has to be what that spice name is. So if it's oregano, it's oregano. Nice. If it's Italian seasoning, however, now it can be open for debate. Most of your mainstream spice companies, their seasoning blends are fine. Okay. But it's always good to, to read, double check. To double check. Read those read ingredients. The, read those ingredients. Gluten-free doesn't mean it has to be tasteless. Just because you're doing gluten-free, it can still be delicious. It can still be easy and convenient. You just have to read carefully. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Ann. Great. You ready for the fridge? Here we are. All right. Now remember, at this point, we're looking at what is gluten-containing and what is gluten-free. The good news is that in the fridge, there's a lot of naturally gluten-free products. As you see, if we go from the top shelf on down, you, all your dairy products, your eggs, your butter, all gluten-free, not to worry. Your yogurt and cheeses, mm -hmm. all fine. Things like polenta are corn-based, also gluten-free. Your deli meats, again, cheeses as we said, um, fruits and vegetables, all safe, all naturally gluten-free. Are there any deli meats that you might have to watch out for? You do have to always watch on those kind of bargain basement types, you always want to check ingredients. Now, one thing I want to point out is any of the jars mm -hmm. that are opened are considered contaminated because, because of double dipping. So anytime you put in a knife <laughs> and spread or put in, you know, a wheat-based chip or something, mm -hmm. the contents of that jar have got to go. All right. So here, there's not a lot to take out, but it would be the jars and things that we would get rid of. Awesome. Other than that, look at all the possibilities, and that's the key takeaway. Okay, Anne, I just have to thank you so much for taking all of us inside of our cupboards and showing us what's already accessible to us and what's already there in our homes that's gluten-free. Pretty cool stuff. My pleasure. It's great fun, but it's going to get better. We're going to go shopping and show you even more things that are gluten-free. I'm totally in. Let's do it. Let's go.